morning and welcome to my channel. Sharon here. I hope you're all well. Um, today I'm doing a clutch, paper bag clutch bag with a journal. I've got one here that I've made um, and it's, it's mainly about making this, the clutch bag. But also I've got this little, these little journals that I've made. And what I did, I, we got, we got Timu here in Spain. I thought I'd give it a go and see what they, what their items, craft items were like. So, um, I bought a couple of paper packs. This one, which was the forest one into the forest, something like that. I can't remember. I can um, link below uh, if I can find it, if it's still there. As you know, it, they come and go. But I wanted to see whether we got customs, duty, admin fees or anything like that with it. So it turned out we didn't, which was quite good. So I also got this kit, this, um, this paper pad which is, um, I can't remember again, but I can find out, basically once upon a time, I think it was called, but about Sleeping Beauty. Uh, so I thought I'd make another one clutch with this. And also um, I've got a couple of odd bits of paper here that I thought I could probably use to cover this with. Unfortunately, these pa these papers are 8 by 8 and don't cover. I could collage. I did think of that. Um, but I've got all these old papers here, wallpapers from Amity Bloom, Paper Daisy and Janie B. But I've also got a kit here from Luna Rosu, Paper Baby Blues. So I thought I might use some of those papers. But first of all, I'm going to show how to make the paper bag envelope. Paper bag, clutch bag, not envelope. So you take the bag, which is, I've got a 12 by six inch bag, and you fold it out along this middle crease here. It does start to kind of naturally fall where it should go. So as you can see it's got natural creases. does sometimes take a bit of manoeuvring. Yeah. <laughs> ah, let's see. I haven't got that bit out there. Let's see. Okay, why is it when you do it on camera, it never quite goes the way it should go? Do you ever find that? This is actually going to fold up here, there. Where's my bone folder there? I'll all manipulate it out. <laughs> That's it. So go over everything with your bone folder, both sides, like this. Right, and then I'm just gluing this little bit down here for now because I'm going to score where I want to um, fold the envelope up. So I'll just glue that bit down for now. And then I'll take my scoreboard 
and I'm going to score at three and seven eighth inches. I'll put measurements down in the description and in centimetres and at four and a half there and then you flip it round and you score at two and three quarters here and at three and a quarter here obviously if you're doing this um, then go along your folds if you've got different size paper bags then you'd have to adapt your measurements but it means here I've got a small spine of three quarters of an inch and at the top I've got a half inch you don't need as much at the top as you do at the bottom well I found that anyway when I was making them so yes we've had people here doing um, staying and we're getting back to the DIY this today not a very pleasant DIY though we've got to we're doing the um, our en suite and we've got to relocate the Poo pipe, <laughs> which is one of the reasons we haven't done it during the summer as well. The heat of the summer. So that's our next stage. So, what we have here now, this folds up, and you can see the original line here where it folded. This comes up just about there, and then this folds down to create this here. So, what I've got to do now is we're going to glue this down here and then um, I need to ink all the way around like that and because bags are never even are they you end up with a slight, um, I don't find it a problem, some people might, I don't know. Um, you can maybe see there it's slightly out and it's sort of, I mean there's not a lot you can do but if you're going to cover it in paper it's not too big a problem. Now I also need to do a concertina bit for the sides here. Okay, for this bit on the side here, so you've got some um, depth to your clutch bag, I'm using some quite stiff car um, craft card and I'm cutting at, um, it's going to be one and a half inches wide. So I'm cutting off there and then I need two pieces which are three and three quarter inches, three and three quarters, actually no I think I'll do three and seven eighths there. And the same on this side, you need two pieces, so three and seven eighths. Okay, then <laughs> you're back to your scoring board again, and you need to score at lengthways like this at three eighths. Whoops. There, three quarters. There, and one and one eighth. There. 
So this gives you your concertina. So to do that, you need, now I'm going to have this bit on the outside. It's slightly different color with my craft card on the inside. So I'm folding, where is it there? So you're doing your valley and your uh, mountain folds. There, and then this one up. So you have a fold like that, and this. Sorry, I'm out of shot. This will now fit into there, like that. This has all been inked. Um, one of the other things you need to do is close the paper bag down. You could have done this at the beginning when you close that one down. Doesn't really matter when it's done. So I just put a bead of glue and a little bit extra just to make sure it's all shuts up there like that if you really wanted to and didn't want this rough edge if you've got it on your bag you could in fact uh, cut it off if you wanted to now i've inked both sides i just do the whole lot um and especially making sure i've got it here so there's the formation of your clutch bag now we've just got to stick in the concertina pieces which I did cut down to three and three quarters and I also need to have some uh, clamps pegs to hold it in place now I'm going to use um, my block which is the equivalent to uh, the fab Fabri-Tac or um, all in three, all in one, the beacon glue. Uh, but this is an own make from a shop called Craftelia um, over here, and in it's also available in the UK as well. Because again, trying to get things here in Spain ends up very expensive. So I put both. I'm hoping you can see that you put that right to the edge and from your fold there your first fold here and you do this on both sides make sure I'm getting it in the right place <laughs> I haven't actually inked these but you don't really see them um, when you've got the journal in so I wasn't too worried but again I mean I've thought about if you print some of your papers onto card you could make quite a nice pretty insert here so make sure that's on the fold there and this comes in there like that and this will fold up here. So now I need to glue both these in. <laughs> so I've now put those clips there and I need to let all of that dry. While that's drying, I need to make the front cover. So I've decided to put a plain cover on the front. And what I've got is I pick these up. I don't know if they're vintage from the um, secondhand Spanish shop where I get all my old books from. So I've using these, I've already got one piece cut out. So these papers are eight by eight. I met. So I'm putting that, put that way around at the back this onto here now I'm just going to use a glue stick 
as I'm going to um, hook out as I'm going to sew round it I can't decide which colour do I go with sort of a cream colour or do I go with a um, pale blue darker blue I don't know I'm using a Giotti glue stick it's quite good I found a stationery shop here that does lots of decent glue sticks. Um, when you live somewhere, I mean, don't get me wrong, the Spanish do, women do lots of crafts, and there's a um, a channel that's um, I can't think of her name. I've watched her a few times, um, and she does. She's actually a on the design team for Digital Collage Club. And she does lots of junk journaling. And one of our friends, her sister, who lives in Pamplona, up north of Spain, up northern Spain, she makes junk journals as well. I need to find out. She's got a YouTube channel, actually. Um, so there's a few people around, but it's just finding the uh, decent glues, etc., of what you can use here, what you can get hold of. I was trying to find some um, dark glitter glue and then when I was looking at the ingredients I then found out that the um, what's it called the cosmic shimmer glue is the same it's an acrylic glue that was quite handy because we can get that that way round that way round I think uh, this has got writing on, so I need to make sure I've got it up the right way. Yeah. Move a little bit. And you don't have to be totally accurate, do you? As long as you've got it where it should be. So what I do now is I need to let this dry as well because I don't like sewing when the glue's wet because it goes all over your needle. So I will do let this dry and let this dry. While all that's drying, um, I've been collecting some papers so for the um, journal. So I've got some straw paper, some music paper, some of this quilting tissue paper, uh, an embroidery pattern, um, a vintage from 1907 vintage invoice, some vintage book page and a kind of dictionary encyclopedia page and I've got a sheet of um, tea, dyed uh, tea dyed paper and a doily and the plan is, I will start with the tea dyed, which I think is all mixed up, I hope. And the plan was to do that <laughs> and spray on the Move that over there and spray on this paper. And then what else I've got is the um, vintage photo. These are the oxide sprays. So see how this goes. This is quite a bit darker and goes a lot further. Oh yes, I like that. Yep, so I now need to let all them dry, but I'm also going to keep this for future projects as well. Okay, all this is dry now, and you've got a nice little clutch bag there with a gusset. And I did put this down to three and three quarter inches in the end. Um, I think it's worked out quite well. And then the cover I've got here. Is all dry and I've sewn around with some blue thread and then I've got these pages to go in 
and I've coffee dyed. No, I haven't coffee dyed. I tea dyed. I don't ever coffee dye. I always tea dye. I've tea dyed the backs and I'm planning on doing some stenciling on there. I'm not going to overly decorate this because it's got to fit into here. And as you can see, while I'm decorating, I will be checking that it can fit. I've got room. So it'll go like that. It's the sound. It's nice and crunchy. <laughs> Um, so what I've got is Sleeping Beauty, I'm assuming, because sort of a once and upon a time. Book page, the straw paper, baby music paper, and I've made a little pouch there, a collage of paper, and here's the... Um, one we did with the doily. Now, I do like how they come out. I'm going to be doing a lot more of them with different doilies. I've got all different sort of designs. The straw paper, folded that. The princess and Prince Charming. Um, book page, and this is that 1907 for that invoice. And then what I've done. Again, I'm going to do stenciling on here. And what I've done, I've kept this page as the middle. As um, I was going to put the invoice in in the middle, but this I thought was, once upon a time, the Sleeping Beauty. I thought that was much better. Um, and then, obviously, all the reverse here. And I did tear this a little bit here, so I've put some of my faux tape on, age tape embroidery page and this is the tea dye side that's come out it does tend to go through as well but I don't think that's a problem really um, and then a page I've sewn did too well with the sewing but it's a junk journal kind of my stitching went bad and I think that was due to the tension or the paper with the tea dye don't know pocket this side because these turned out all right more stenciling will be done there and then the back page with the fairy oh no <laughs> two more oh yes the straw paper oh god oh, it's too early in the morning to be doing this i think i've just folded over you could cut it but i thought no i'm going to fold it over there's lots of space there for journaling then and then book page and then the last page not doing too well there was I as I say I haven't even had a cup of tea yet and I think that's what I need so I'm going to go off and have a cup of tea and sew this in and then I'll be back to do the cover right I've sewn in the cover had a lovely cup of tea as well keep me going um sewn in the cover I've sewn in the pages here now what I want to do is do the cover and what I've got is They've got some journal cards and I thought this could go on here. And I've got some lace which can go all the way around. I was only just going to tuck it over, but I'm actually thinking I could actually put it all the way around and then trim off down that side. So I think that's what I'm going to do. First, I just need to roughly position where I want this lace to lay. So I think there. So I'm going to put some glue down the edge here just to hold it in place. And then I'm going to put um, glue onto the flowers to hold it down. Okay, I do need to trim this off, but I'm not going to do that until it's really dry. So I'm going to leave that for the moment. I was half tempted just to put it over, but I'm going to be putting some pockets down here, so I think I'm going to trim it. Now, the next thing I've edged this in vintage photo is I'm going to put that on, and then I thought I could put this round now that's as far as I've got I want to put something on here 
but I'm not too sure what just yet. So I'm just going to put this down. And as I do the journal, I will look at a few things and sort of try and make my mind up. I'm trying to think whether a flower or some bling. I was thinking maybe a blue flower to tie in with the blue or a brownish flower. Um, I'm definitely not sure at the moment what to put there. But I'm sure we will come up with something, make sure I've got it on the right way. Moving this over to the right, to the left a bit. There. Now. Do I leave it overhanging a bit? I think maybe a bit like that. So I'm going to put some glue up around there to hold it down. Okay, I'm going to leave all that to dry and then I've got to make a decision about there as well. Um, the next thing I want to do is to put in a... Uh, oh dear, my goodness gracious, a pocket either end. And I've got this and I've got this lace. And what I'm thinking is making a pocket just there. So I've cut the size. Oh, excuse me. I've cut the size of pockets I want. Um, I think I might have to change my blade. My uh, it's getting a bit rough. I'm not too worried with this because it could be the it's cutting the paper pieces. Um, it's the type of paper that I've got with this. Because it doesn't seem to do it when I do the uh, tea dyed or the um, any of the other. So it could just be the quality of this paper, maybe. Way up. So what I want to do is take some of this, but just put this bit sort of move that out of the way. <laughs> Let's put this bit over the top so it sort of comes down a bit like that. So I'm just going to cut that up there. And then along the top there. So that's down like that. Now um, I've just got the back to do, which I will do off camera. And I think now it's to get on with the envelope. Right, I've covered the envelope, as you can see, but not the inside because I need to put a closure on it. Um, what I'm going to do is take two of these craft card and then I'm also going to punch out two smaller circles to go underneath. So I can raise it and then wrap cord around to make the oh, <laughs> make the closure. So I'm just going to glue all of these together. Now this is virtually the last part, and I've just got to you just do it like that. Then I glue these pieces onto here. 
so that this raises up to make the closure the, the and then I'm going to wrap some of this pink twine around it. Like that. And then what I've done, I've punched a circle out of some spare paper, scrap of paper I've got. And then I'm just going to stick this on the top there. So now push, I push a hole through there because it is quite stiff and it does take a bit to go through like that. Then I'm putting this about there on this. it down just a little bit roughly mark where I want it to go and get my punch I'm hoping no that won't so I'm gonna have to use the small one on this sorry about that just dropped everything <laughs> So I will punch that through there. Oh dear, everything is falling down. And then what I've got is a little pink thread. To go through there and through there. I want it that way up. So this now gives you, I don't know if you can see, a little bit there to wrap your ribbon or twine or whatever you're wrapping over it. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to push down on a metal ruler because that really flattens them out. <laughs> And then I have this piece already done to go on here. Going just above there. Now I've been having major issues with my glue. So I'm not even sure this is going to work. I, it's no, it's getting an airlock and I don't quite understand why. So I think I'm going to have to use the small one and hope I can get enough on there. Yeah, I don't know what on earth's going on with that glue. It's it seems to have an airlock, a bubble in it, but you undo it all and you clear it all out and then it starts all off again. Straight away you get one little blob through and that's it. So if anybody knows why I'm getting the airlock in there, maybe I've got the top done up too tight. I'm going to leave it now so it all drops down and I think I'm going to wash it all out um, and maybe top the glue up. See how that works. But I mean, it's about halfway down, so it should be fine. I've gone a lot further down than that before. There. And I'll put some on here and around it as I've not got the bigger one. Make sure it glues down. And it's there. <laughs> Get the right place there. And the second bend. Like that. Make sure I've got it over there. There, and that is going across there, and I have this, which I intend this does work. Um, it starts off a bit tight, but it works itself where you need it in the end. 
Oops, it's going to roll off. Right. I'm sorry about the noise. I keep forgetting this is glass. Okay, so that's the closure for it. I will now do a um, flip through of the journal that I've now finished and show you what I've done in it and the tags etc I've made. So this is the um, two pouches I've made. The one with the forest journal which I did a quick th flip through at the beginning and then this is the one the pouch we finished making and then inside I've got this journal uh, once upon a time and we, we made this and I put that on and I've put some extra sequins on as well. Then I've made tags um, using some book pages and backed it in that paper from Ikea. The roll of paper I had from when my grandson was living here. And then I've just done a bit of collage on it, some antique book page. There's the pockets we made. I've done some stamping. And any off cuts I've made some ruffles with. This is just a material a lace paper flip, some embossed paper and some lace, and some um, texture paste that I've dyed with vintage photo ink, and just put on with a brad. Some more stamping, another tag I've made, but it's an up tuck. <laughs> And I've just put a little bit of um, paper scrap that I had and um, some lace left over, stapled it on. And then when you put it in here, it can go over the top of the music pocket. A ruffle from the um, quilting tissue, some vintage, uh, vintage tea cards. And I've also put some rusted paper clips on there. Um, this is again a rusted paper clip with a bit of lace on and a vintage um, photograph of a castle. Not sure where. These are the Shabby Debbie Doodah labels, and I've just touched that on there to give it a bit of strength. Some more stents, uh, stamping, just a piece of a linen with. Um, some texture paste on through a stencil. This is from 1907, a receipt. There's the, a belly band with a card. They say if you dream a thing more than once, it's sure to come true. And that's the middle. And I just put some little, punched out some little circles for the middle. Some of that embroidery pattern. The other side of the, um, oh, it's 1907, 1907, um, of the invoice. And then again, I've put some textured paste linen on there with one of Shabby Dabby Doodah's labels. And again, I've been using up the scraps from that Baby Blues from by Luna Rossu kit and just some embossing, just collaged on there. That is some vintage letter from a letter. Another ruffle. This is, I'll show you, is a flip over. And what I've done, I've got one of the Tim Holtz little mini paper clips. And then I've got a rusted uh, safety pin and I've put in some scraps of lace. So you've got journal space there and some on there, but then bit of stamping there. I've just hooked it over the page. So it gives a bit of interest to this page and then just pinned it on and it hangs over there nicely. 
again shabby dabby doofdar label the embroidery paper the paper that we um sprayed and another vintage tea card will not tea card cigarette card will cigarettes with a rusted paper clip some more stamping another tag i made um with a bit of collaging and a shabby dabby doodah label more stamping and here i've got an up tuck again with a scrap that was left over this is a vintage cigarette no, not cigarette, cigar label from um, the 1960s and another vintage card. They are Belgium from Antwerp and the castle again that I've just put into there. And that opens up and you've got plenty of writing space. Just a bit of um, texture paste, some more stamping and then the back is the pocket we made and another um, collaged car, uh, tag there with some lace in the top. So that's the journal, that's the pouch, and this is the other one I made. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Please give it a go. I'm gonna put the measurements in the bottom and I'll speak to you all again soon. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Many thanks, bye.